you you find me for that and, you know take time out to say that you know I give honor to God for even giving me this opportunity. I don't take it lightly whether it's on the phone or in front of people. I believe the word of God is still can go forth with power and I just pray that you will open your heart to receive you know what God is getting ready to say on tonight. And even before I go into my text and anything like that, let's just you know, just prepare our hearts to receive. I know many of us are just getting off work. Many of us are dealing with children, grandchildren, and we don't want any distractions. So, Father God, we come on this evening, Lord God, gathered together, Lord God, with one mindset and on one accord, God, saying that, Holy Spirit, that you have free course and free reign in our lives, oh God. And I, I pray, Lord God, what happens on tonight, God, will happen because of the unity that is taking place on this life, God. Whether we're in Chicago or Arizona or in Mexico, God, or in Los Angeles, Lord God, we serve the same God. We serve the same Jesus, God. So we pray even on tonight, God, that God, that you will shift the atmosphere on our behalf, Lord Father God. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this conference line, Lord God. And Father God, we declare, God, that God, that the spirit of grace will be upon us, Lord God, and that, God, that you will strengthen us as men, God, that you will cause us to be your sons, God, that even after this message on tonight, Lord God, that we will go, Lord God, and do what you called us to do. We will change neighborhoods, God. We will change our nations, God. We will change our cities, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Once again, I'd like to thank my brother and my friend, Pastor Walter, for either uh, thinking of me. You know, I want to just, like I said, bless everybody again on, on tonight. I'm not going to be able to, before you lost, it's going to take a lot of your time. But I do want to share what the Holy Spirit has given me, given me and what the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about. So those of you who have your Bibles, if you can turn with me quickly to Acts chapter 4. Verse, I'm just going to start at verse 23. And I'll be reading out of the Living Translation. <clears throat> and it says, As soon as they were free, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. 24. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, why, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. 27. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod, for Herod Antipas and Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. Now and now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Shake out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they preached the word of God with boldness. Amen. And just for a couple of minutes, I, just, I, I believe that God has called us to a greater level in our preaching, a greater level in our teaching, and a greater level in our evangelism. So tonight, briefly, I just really want to talk about great boldness. And even, you know, that's what we need in this hour and in this season of our life, great boldness. Um, just a brief synopsis of what's going on in the scripture. Uh, Peter and John, two of the two of the apostles, as we know, they were put in jail for doing what they did best, and that's preach, was preaching the word of God. They were preaching about Jesus. And so they were they were in a place where they were in jail and they were getting ridiculed and they were getting talked about and they were getting the, the law of the land was coming against what they were preaching. But something happened where, where the Spirit of God allowed Peter and John to become free. And what they did was they went back to the other part.
apostles and to the other believers and told them what 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 was what was going on, what was happening. But in the previous chapter, um, John and Peter they were threatened if they preached the name of Jesus ever again. So they went back and they let them know that this is what's going on. They, they they're coming against what we believe and they're setting the laws and they're, they're threatening us from preaching against what they believe is. They called us up and they're telling us to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. But what they did was they gathered together and what they did, they got on one accord and they prayed the same prayer. They had the same mindset and they asked God. They said, God, you, you already prophesied this. You already knew this was going to take place. The Holy Ghost revealed this to us years ago through our, your servant David. But now what we ask God is that you would hear the threat of our oppressors, that you would hear the threat of those that are coming against us, hear the threats of those that are coming against Jesus Christ, and give us power, give us great boldness, give us, give us the same, give us that authority, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, give us that same power, so that not that we can kill them, not so that we can react and retaliate, but we can do one thing, and that's preach with great boldness. Allow us when we preach, allow us to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles. Stretch out your hand over us so that we can teach. And when we preach, that we will operate in signs, wonders, and miracles. And then at that time, as soon as they prayed, something miraculous happened. There was a shaking in the atmosphere. There was a shaking in the place that they were at. And they, they were praying. And I want to look at something because over the past few weeks, we have been on the call, we have been transparent, we have been open, we have been, been free. We have been in the same place that Peter and John was at. We were in prison, whether it was, we were in prison with our sin, whether it was fear, lust, perversion, no matter what it is, we were bound by our sins. But something happened, even when we accepted Jesus, when we got delivered, and we got set free, and, we, and we, when we confess our faults one to another, we, there was a li liberty that came into our lives, which represents that same thing that Paul and John was in prison. And one of the things that we have to understand as men of God is that when we are bound as men, everything around us becomes, becomes bound. Nothing can happen, nothing can be free until we, as the men of God, become free. We have to learn how to break every chain. We have to depend on God to destroy every yoke in our lives. Even the secret things, even the things you think nobody can see, God sees them. And we have to be set free from those things. Whether we prophesy, lay hands, preach or teach, we have to be 100% free from our sins in order for the Spirit of God to move in our lives. So another thing has to be, we have to understand, we have to really look at the scripture, and we have to understand that, that another thing that happened after they were free, these are steps to really walking out the true deliverance. These are really steps of really, really being free in our lives. After we become free, then the next thing is, is to unify ourselves with those that have the same mindset, the same DNA, the same heartbeat, that, that, that they feel the same way we feel when it comes to ministry, and we have to be unified in the body of Christ. One of the things that, that the reason why we don't see the full manifestation of the glory of God, we don't see the dead raised, we don't see, a, a lot of times we don't see the lame man walk, is because there's so much division in the body of Christ. There's so much division. So much division. How can it be that we all call ourselves the body of Christ, but yet there are so many different denominations? Well, you believe this, and we don't believe that. You believe in speaking in tongues, but no, we believe in just being baptized in the Holy Ghost, but no, you believe you got to be baptized three times and then rolled in oil and then rolled in water. We have so many stipulations to be a part of the body of Christ, and that's not what Jesus died for. Jesus died so we can have unity in the spirit. And so and that's what the, the, the apostles said, look, they try to tell us. They don't want us to preach the gospel anymore. They don't want us to preach about Jesus. And so they came and one thing they did was they didn't gossip. They didn't say, well, what did you want to get in jail? They didn't do anything like that. What they did was they gathered together and got themselves in one accord and in one mindset. And men of God, that's something that we have to do in the body of Christ. We have to come together and we have to stand firm and we have to come together 
we are the body of Christ in order for us to see signs, wonders, and miracles, in order for us to change laws and government, in order for us to, 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 to say to, we don't stand for killing, we don't stand for rape, we don't stand for homosexuality. It's not what are you going to do in the question is, what are we going to do as the body of Christ? So unity has to come into position and come into play. And then as they gather together, wonderful, they pray the same prayer. Once again, not only can we unify together physically, but even in the realm of the spirit, we have to begin to pray the same thing. If we want our cities changed, we have to begin to pray the same prayer. Many, a lot of times we get together and we have, uh, uh, we come together for prayer. This person is praying for a new car. This person is praying that somebody is being healed. This person is praying so much. One thing we have to do is learn to do is come together with one prayer. They lifted up one voice. It didn't say that the mother started first. The scripture didn't say that the priest started first. It said they gathered at the same time with one voice. They gathered together and prayed the same prayer. And as they prayed the same prayer, then they begin to ask the little Lord's children, look, hear, hear their threat. Hear what's going on in the lives, in the lives of those who you sin. And then what happened with that is they asked for great boldness. So after you get delivered, and after you go for the unity with, with your brother, the next step is in order for you not to go back to that old place, not to go back to that old mind, and not to go back to, to sleeping and checking around. You have to pray for great boldness and not to preach the gospel. The gospel is not just, you know, not just saying preaching on Sunday morning or, or at especially being at a conference. Your lifestyle should be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your lifestyle should be a living testimony that Jesus was not only did he brought us down on the cross, but he rose from the grave. And that same power that was on the inside of him is on the inside of us. And that's when we begin to see the signs, wonders, and miracles taking place. Men of God, I really feel what God is calling us to do in this season. There are some things that are happening in our city. There's things happening in our government. There's things that are happening even in, in, in the judicial system that is not for the body of Christ. They're not for what we believe. They're, everything that they are passing, every law that they are passing, is actually coming against the chief, our God, and his Christ. They're coming against the church. They, things are in the media that are making a mockery of the church. They are making, I mean, laws that are taking the authority away from the church. If you don't, if you don't marry homosexuality, we'll take your 501c3. If you don't preach this, then we'll take away your 501c3. If you don't do this, then we'll take your license away from this. But we have to stand as the men of God. We have to stand as God's chosen vessels and preach against the grace of men. We have to preach and say, look, Jesus did not die for this, but this is what we believe that they stand firm and they stand bold, you know, for, uh, for what Jesus has called us to do. The only way we can, another reason why laws won't be changed is because we run in fear, we run in hide, we're afraid of losing our jobs, we're afraid of losing money, we're afraid of losing government assistance. But our resources is not in man. Our resources come from the very throne of God. Our resources come from God himself. And see, one of the things is that the apostles knew was that as long as they preached the gospel, as long as they stood fast for Jesus Christ, nothing else mattered. They didn't worry about money because why? They made God made sure he made provisions for them. If you are called by God, if you are ordained by God, if you have heaven step over you, no matter what Obama, no matter what Governor Quinn, no matter what any governmental official will say, it does not outrank the authority of Jesus Christ. So we have to pray for that great boldness to preach the word in season and out of season, whether it's popular or unpopular. We have to stand bold and we have to ask God, God, you hear what America is saying. God, you hear what the government is saying. You see the laws that are being passed. God, hear their threats. And even begin to give us that power, that, that great boldness, that we will preach under the power of God. That when we stand up and preach and teach under the, uh, under the power of God, they 
nation that you live in. Can a God daughter look at this for one? One man that will stay here in my own daughter. If you notice the where America is going, we are going back into a, a Sodom and Gomorrah type status. And it's only the prayers of the righteous men that is turning the hand of God and say, I'll heal your land if you just humble yourself. Then we need to get back into the atmosphere of praying and intercession. I'm tired of seeing women intercessing. I uh, pray God for them. I love them. I honor them. But God, something happens when a man of God says, God, here I am. They hear what I have to say. God, I'm tired of my city. I'm tired of my brother's dying. I'm tired of my son dying. God, I'm tired of the family and dysfunction that here I am, oh God. Answer my prayers. Then we have to be more serious when it comes to the church. I had to tell a man of God he was so excited that his wife was going to learn how to pray for her husband. And that was a burden for me that that bothered me. I said, no man of God, but there's something in place for the men to go pray. That's something we do. We listen. We hear prayer and we see nothing but women. We may see one or two brothers and that's it. But oh my God, what will happen when we gather together as men and we get on one accord and we say, look, whether women show up or not, here's a room full of men saying, God, here we are as the sons of God, ready for you to do signs, wonders, miracles, and great exploits in our city. Chicago, we get tired.
know if you're something, your destiny will speak to God on your behalf. I don't know who I'm talking to while I'm going this way, but I have, I have to encourage you that your destiny speaks on your behalf. Sometimes if you don't have words to say, then you don't feel like preaching, or you don't feel like studying, or you don't feel like praying. It's something on that Christ that's on the inside of you. See, the Bible says that Christ, He makes intercession for us. The Holy Spirit also makes intercession for us. So that if the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you, when you don't feel like it, it rises up and does it. So I remember the doctor came into the, the ER room and, and, and she said it. And she said to me, She said, Man, I don't know how you were alive, but you should have been dead weeks ago. As a matter of fact, you should have been dead months ago. But I. I you came in as a walking dead man. And I had to ask God, I said, God, well, why wasn't I dead? And God had to show me that in the realm of the spirit, I was dying at an accelerated rate because I wasn't operating in the things of God. I wasn't operating in, the, in, in what God had called me to do. I was allowing everything but to fulfill my task of living and, and, and going out and partying and, and kicking it. Yes, I was saved and I would go to church and, and speak to tongues and lay hands on people, but not knowing what I was releasing on them with the same struggles that I had. I had to get set free in order for other people to get set free. Come on, you got to hear me on tonight. We can't be bound and allow our sins to dictate whether or not we serve God or not. We have to renounce our sins and be free. And it wasn't until I renounced my sins and got free that God had to revisit me and, and shook another doctor and said, God, I want you to know this is not unto death. This is just something you have to go through temporarily. So as the, as the doctor said that, and it's, and it's just so far it's been three years that I'm waiting on God. And God took me and took me to me again. God has to shake me in the middle of the night. He said, when he, I don't know, you remember the scripture. When he got, when, when he was with his disciples and he asked the question, he said, who do men say that I am? Some say you are Elijah, some say you are this person, you are a prophet. But he asked a question, a personal question, he said, who do you say that I am? And he said, he said Lord, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood, then I reveal this to you. And God woke up in the middle of the night and said, Son, he said, who do you say that I am? I said, God, you are you. And Jesus, you're the level of my soul. He said, do you believe I can heal? I said, yes, God, I believe. I believe you can heal. He said, but he said, you have faith to believe I can heal everybody else. He said, if I call you to lay hands and you've seen things happen on, on your behalf from your prayers, how come you don't pick that same faith for your life? And I had to go to God and I had to begin. I said, God, I, I, I repent because I limit you in my life. But I have great expectations for everybody else. So for God, if you forgive me, God, give me that chance to remove the limits of God. Give me my this gives me the opportunity to break you off the box, God. God, show yourself strong in my life. So my faith can be a testimony. So that when I preach, I won't have to have this, this issue of an analysis machine in the realm of the spirit holding me back. But God, God, so that I can be free. And then God, I want to be honest with you. As I pray that a lot of dialysis patients, they can't urinate, they can't fully urine. But I, I, this is my testimony. It may be good for some, but this shows me the God that I serve. I've been going to the washroom like 
that brother shot her. And we think, God, you hear the threats and the plans of America against the church, against the body of Christ. Hear that threat, so God. And even now, God, endow us, Lord God, with power, Lord God. Give us great boldness. You'll give your servants great boldness in preaching your word, God. Stretch out your head with healing power. Let signs, wonders, and miraculous miracles follow us, Lord God, as you did your holy servant, Jesus, O oh God. Father God, we preach in the name of Jesus, God. We operate in the name of Jesus. And God, you, and Lord Jesus, you said all power is in your hand, God. Father God, Lord Jesus, you have given us the keys to the kingdom. Now give us the keys to heal the sick. Give us the keys to raise the dead. Give us the keys to change our nation. Give us the keys to change our city. Give us the keys to the sin of murder and suicide and death, Lord God. Give us those keys, Lord God, to unlock the mysteries of heaven. Give us the give us the keys to allow heaven to invade the earth, Lord God. Give us access to the realm of your world in Jesus. Lord God, give us power, Lord God. Give us sound counsel, Lord God. Father God, I pray for the authority that even Peter had, God, that our shadow heal people, Lord God. Oh, 